Thank you, Father. So, the word that I have that I wanted to share is anybody who has a house, cars, whatever assets you have in the United States of America, you need to sell them and get your money because there is going to come a time very soon when you will not have the opportunity to sell anything. So what happened is that a sister and I began to speak earlier on a live stream that I did. And she wrote in the comments about she her needing to sell her home. Well, it brought back to my remembrance that the Most High put in my spirit some, I don't know, more than six months ago, that people need to liquidate everything. And not only just liquidate it into cash, but you need to trade the U.S. dollars that you get from it as quickly as you can because the U.S. money is not going to be worth anything. Thank you, Father. And I recall telling some friends the same thing. I say, you need to get over. You need to get over to the motherland as soon as possible so that we can send our money so that we'll have some money. And so my alert to everyone is to cash your U.S. dollars, even if you're already there. If you get caught or stuck with U.S. dollars, you are in trouble. And I wouldn't even, I wouldn't want to, uh, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say to even <laughs> take pounds. I, I wouldn't want to trade for pounds. I don't know what currency, but you don't need European dollars. I wouldn't take them. I would want my money to be in some other form of currency. Hallelujah. And as I do a little bit of thinking on this, as the Most High brings me more information, I will give you what I receive from Him. So sell your houses, your cars. If you hear Him, when it comes to the messages that are being sent forth about leaving, then you need to sell what you have. Get cash and then trade that cash in for other currency, ASAP. Hallelujah. Let go of the things that you have as quickly as you can. I know that there are plenty of you who do not want to do this. You do not understand what's going on. But I just want to say to those of you who do not understand what's going on, listen to me. I know you don't want to leave, leave behind your things. But what if somebody told you that all your money and all your valuables are going to be worth zero and you're going to get caught holding a bag of trash everything that seems like it's your golden like it's gold diamonds pearls it's all going to be trash in a matter of just you know almost like seconds in a moment in the twinkling of an eye it's going to be over with. I'm telling you guys. I know this sounds strange. But please receive this prophetic word. Liquidate. 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 Sell your material goods. Hallelujah. And get cash. And then get your cash. And liquidate that into other currency. Now, um, 
just no European currency. And like I said, I'm going to ask the Most High to direct me um, to understand what's the best currency. For now, African currency seems great, you know. Um, but I don't know. Maybe not all African currency. Because some African currency is just French or European. Or French is European, but is European currency. Some African currency is just European currency. So, we need to know what currency to put our money into. To trade our money in for. Get rid of your American currency. Trade your American currency for something else immediately. Get your passports immediately. Get rid of your American currency. The U.S. dollar is worth nothing. Now, you know this ahead of time. There's still time to get rid of it. Get rid of it. I'm serious. I cannot stress this enough. I cannot say it enough. Get rid of your American currency. Those of you who understand business and business matters, get busy taking care of this business. Research, do whatever you have to do. Get rid of your American currency. Trade it so that you will have something of value if you don't. Your American houses, your American cars, your American valuables, gold, jewelry, I don't care what it is. Liquidate it and then take the cash and trade it for other currency. Now, there is no more time for you to think about it. There's only time to get rid of your American currency. You know... Whoever is out there listening, none of us can accuse the Most High of not warning us because he does. He does it and he does it over and over and over again. He's done it over and over again. Never say he hasn't warned you. Never say he hasn't been fair. Because he has. He's warned you. Through different people. At different times. He keeps trying to speak to you. He is not. Hallelujah. Our father is not willing that any should perish. He would prefer it if all of us came to the knowledge. Of who he is. He would prefer it if we all yielded to his will, sought his face, and learned of his ways. Our Father is not willing that a single soul should perish. But we have to make the choice. We have to make that choice. He's not going to make it for us, and he's not going to make a single one of us do anything he has given us free will we all know this in the coming days in the coming weeks you will hear hallelujah you will hear the sound of the trumpet like you never have before you will hear the sound of the trumpet like you've never heard it before. The sound of the trumpet is his children. The sound of a trumpet in the last days is the sound of his children speaking over and over and over. Again, in many different ways, but saying the same thing. And if you think that you're annoyed because why does this person keep saying this to me? Listen to me. 
I have become angry at times and I've said, I'm not going to say a mumbling word to these people again. I'm frustrated just like brother Jonah was. I'm tired of them. They hard headed. Let them perish. Yes, I said that. But the Most High took over me. And he made me speak again. To the very same ones that I said I wouldn't say another word to. Stop thinking it's us. We only deliver messages. That's it. That's all we're here for. We're messengers. But you're going to hear us sound the trumpet like you've never heard the sound of a trumpet before. If you thought you were annoyed, get ready. You're going to be annoyed beyond measure because our Father is a loving, kind, just, holy, fair, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. He is fair, loving, just and kind and he is calling out to you and the way he does it he tells his children cry loud and spare not lift up your voice like a trumpet hallelujah and that is what we're doing it's nothing to do with you personally this is why I don't like to deliver messages one on one because people always Look at the messenger. Stop looking at the messenger. Go to your father. Go to the secret place of the Most High. Ask him why he's chasing you down with the same message. It's not just coming from me. You're hearing things from different places. Everywhere you turn, you're hearing the same thing. In the beginning, it was a word here and a word there. But it's about to become so intensified. You're going to hear the same thing over and over and over again. You know why? He's going to send the word over and over and over again because he has to do it. Because the more you hear the word, the more repetitious you hear his word, the more repetitious the same message becomes, like the more repetitive it becomes. Listen, that's danger. It should signal in you a sense of danger and urgency because it means that it's getting closer. To the time for him to perform that which he said he's going to do through his prophets and prophetesses. Please listen. Please listen. Yah is speaking. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Yah is speaking. Are you listening? Hallelujah. Yah, a.k.a. God is speaking are you listening if you don't he's gonna keep speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking he's gonna keep speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking until bam it's gonna be in your face it's gonna be too late he has to do that because he loves us he does it because he's so good it's his character that forces him to warn you until, even up until the moment, just before impact, he's going to warn you because he's wonderful. He's marvelous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, prepare yourselves, throw down your idols. Whatever it is that you're into that has nothing to do with the Most High, that's your idol. Hallelujah. Is it a boyfriend? Hallelujah. Is it the television? Hallelujah. 
Is it, is it music? Worldly music. Mm, hallelujah. What is it that you preoccupy with? Is it your job? Hmm. I'm a big advocate for having your own business. But uh, is your business taking up so much of your time that you don't have any for the most high? You don't have any time to slow down and get into the secret place. Is that what's going on? It's unacceptable. Throw down your idols. Hallelujah. He wants us to get in his face. To seek his face. To follow his ways. To search for his will. Ask him. What's going on around you? And you shall receive the answer. Seek his truth. Seek to be filled with his word and his ruach. A.K.A. For those of us who don't know what the ruach Kodesh is yet. His Holy Spirit. Knock and he will open up doors for you. That will close all your life and he will bless you with riches and wealth that this world doesn't even understand now I'm materially poor but I'm grateful for that because I'm spiritually rich hallelujah and so I'd prefer to have the kind of riches that I have. And hopefully, prayerfully, one day soon, you will come to the realization that all these things, these things that we own down here, are less than nothing. They are nothing and less than that. Hallelujah. The Word says, His Word, says they are filthy rags. Thank you, Father. Oh, Father, use me. Oh, Father, open my mouth and I'll speak. Father, fill me up with your word and I will let them flow. Your words flow freely. I'll let them flow. Hallelujah. Speak to your children. Those who are willing to listen. Those who have an ear to hear. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all. Thank you all. But more than anything, please, before you turn from this video, go into the secret place when you're done and ask him, why, why, Father, are all these people dreaming these dreams? What's going on? Father, what am I missing out on? I repent. Oh, I'm so sorry. Wake me up. Shake me. Don't leave me behind. Father, please. I sense danger because if they're hearing and I'm not, what am I doing? Where am I in regard to the things of Yah and the things of the world? Hallelujah. Am I on the wrong side of the fence? Am I pretending? Am I straddling the fence? Father, see, I understand something. Ask him. Because there have been times that I started out here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And I ended up all the way down there. And I said, whoa, wait a minute. How did I get there? How did I get here? I started out over here. And somehow I was distracted and redirected into a position in this life that I never wanted to be in. 
So it's okay. It happens to the best of us. It happens to his children. We are in this world and we are not of this world. And the enemy won't leave us alone, not for a minute. Your adversary, the devil, goeth about as a hungry, roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So be sober. Stop chilling so much. Be sober. Stop partying so much. Be vigilant like a security guard, like a police officer. You got to watch that devil because he's watching you. Don't you play with the devil because he ain't playing with you. He wants you dead. He wants you dead. Wake up. Hallelujah. Wake up, thou that sleepest, and Yah. Yeshua will give thee light, for certainly you are in darkness. Wake up and redeem the time. How do you redeem the time? Pray twice as much as you would normally pray. Read twice as long as you would normally read. Fight, fight, fight the devil. He's fighting you. Fight him back. You hear negative thoughts in your mind? Tell that devil, I believe the report of the Most High. Fight that devil. Don't lay down and let him whoop you. He's going to say negative things to you. It's going to make you think you're crazy. Fight him back. Whose report do you believe? I believe the report of the Most High. And you should. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Psalm 119. I'm going to read just from where the book was cracked open. Psalm 119, starting from verse 49. Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. Hallelujah. <laughs> Remember the word to your servants, upon which you have caused us to hope. We hope on the words that he gives us. We hope on the promises that are here. That is our hope. Everything that we go through in this life, the reason we're able to ignore the devil whenever he comes is because our hope is in him, is in his word, is in what he says. Thank you, Father. This is my comfort in my affliction. See what I mean? This is my comfort in my affliction. For your word has quickened me. Hallelujah. Sort of like woke me up inside. Let me know what's going down for real on this earth. Hallelujah. The proud have had me greatly in derision. Yet have I not declined from thy law. No matter what we, we go through, we don't turn from his law. Because we know that that's the devil. He's doing his job. He's doing what he's supposed to do. But that don't change that we serve a mighty good father. Hallelujah. I remembered thy judgments of old. The same judgment that you put on our brethren before us. Hallelujah. We remember them and it gives us comfort and peace. Hallelujah. See, 52, Psalm 119, 52. I remember thy judgments of old, O Abba, and have comforted myself. You can get in this word and it comforts you. Say, hold on, calm down, pat yourself. As if it was another person. Calm down. Remember what he said. It's okay. But he said this. He told you they were going to come after you. See? It's alright. He's with you. In the end we win. Hallelujah. Thank you Father. Horror. 
has taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Well, I can relate to that. Horror, hallelujah, has taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Horror to hear that these men and women in America, these elitists, these elite all over the world are snatching up and raping and uh, murdering, sacrificing children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's sick and it's like a horror story. Hallelujah. But it's okay. It's okay. I can relate to that though. 54. Thy statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. <laughs> right here in America is the house of my pilgrimage. But his statutes are my songs that I sing to comfort myself. Hallelujah. This is how you get through. No matter what. No matter what comes at you. This is how you Hallelujah. I have remembered thy name, O Elohim, in the night, and have kept thy law. Hallelujah. This I had because I kept thy precepts. Hallelujah. Thou art my portion, O Elohim. I have said that I would keep thy words. I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. I thought on my ways and turned my feet <laughs> from evil toward thy testimonies. Hallelujah. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Meaning as soon as I heard what you wanted me to do, I jumped up, underlay, quick, and got it done. Thank you, Father. The, the bands of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten thy law. At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee. Hey, what time is it? Let's check. Oh, it's ten minutes after midnight. And we praising them. Hallelujah. Hey, yeah, yeah, hallelujah, yeah, hey, Father, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, hallelujah, yeah, 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 thank you, Father, yeah, mm -hmm. thank you, Father. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. At midnight I will rise and give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. I am a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts. Hallelujah. Meaning my friends are those who follow your word and your will, you know. I'm not unequally yoked when it comes to my friends. <laughs> Isn't that something? Y'all need to read the book before you judge people. Make sure your judgment is right. You got, Hey, the Bible says it's a joy to the just to do judgment. See, people leave that out because they don't want you pointing out those spots all over their garments. <laughs> They don't want you to talk about the spots on their garments, right? But the Bible says it's a joy to the just to do judgment, okay? We ought to execute judgment in the earth. Because we know better than these worldly judges out here. Hallelujah. I'd like to sit in a courtroom someday. I bet I can read some people up in there. <laughs> But they give these judges that, you see, we even the Bible says it's wrong for us to take each other to the earthly judge. 
And I see why. Because they corrupt. If you ain't following the most high, <laughs> you ain't going to make right decisions. See, live long enough and understand where people coming from. When they tell you what they do and they don't do. It's all in the book. It's all in the book. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Bring it to me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. The word said, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. It never said, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelieving husbands and wives. Hmm. It never said, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelieving uh, boyfriends and girlfriends, which are pretty much illegal. It says, be ye not unequally yoked together, you know, binding yourself together with unbelievers. So people who judge me because I proceed with caution, fine. You read the word. You check it out. See, I grew up here too, born and raised in America. And what we've learned is that we can be friends with anybody we want. We just can't marry an unbeliever. But as you hang out with your friends every day, what do you think is going to happen to you? Everything that they do rubs off on you. In fact, I've learned by falling down that when I hang out with an unbeliever, I end up falling in the mud. Now, they like it in the mud because they're pigs. And I'm talking about, let me get it straight. Let me point out to you what I'm saying. Make it clear and plain, right? So, I'm talking about unbelievers have been in my life and pretended the whole way through like they had some type of interest in the Most High. It don't take you no 20 years. See, when I found out about the Most High, I had a friend and I was an unbeliever and she was a believer, right? And it didn't take me very long. In fact, within the same year of us becoming friends, I became a believer. My friend that I met, she was an unbeliever. I came into her life, we became friends, boom, she became a believer in the same year, within a matter of months, right? I'm not saying it got to happen that fast for everybody, but it don't take no 20 years, okay? Because for some people, sin is something that they got caught up in until they met their father, Elohim. And they began to learn his ways. They become interested in the instruction manual. And they begin to read the instructions and follow them. And they begin to change their lives. Yet for others, sin is a lifestyle. Keep looking. Take your time. Keep watching. The devil knows how to pin his horns down. But eventually, woo, they just come sticking up again. That is the character of the devil. I've watched. I've waited patiently. And I've seen this throughout my life in more than one person's life. Now, with every believer, I give benefit of the doubt. Unless the Father speaks in my spirit and says, no bueno. Meaning, no good. This person is not good. This person is not from me. This person is not just some lost sheep. This person is a tear trying to mix themselves in with the wheat to confuse us all. Okay? Sometimes it takes me a little bit of time to figure this out. And sometimes it takes me a little longer. Right? But if we are following him and we pray to him, and we ask him to be filled with the Ruach Kodesh, a.k.a. the Holy Spirit. 
he will give each and every one of us the same gift. And I'm going to keep saying it because it is very important. We're living in the last days and we all need it some kind of bad right now more than ever before. Because the devil is more deceitful, more wicked than I have ever seen in my entire life. And I am a watch woman. I have been watching for quite some time. I am also a storyteller. The Most High blessed me to watch life and to glean from other people's mistakes and my mistakes all the wisdom that there is to be gained. And then he raised me up after I grew up in him and said, the stories that you know and have learned from I've given them to you I've allowed you to see these mistakes and to see the wisdom to gain the wisdom from all of those mistakes that you made and other people have made because you're a storyteller hallelujah you must tell the stories so that others will understand all of your mistakes were not for just no reason they were you went through those things so that others don't have to go through it you went through those things so that others can learn our brothers and sisters here they went through the things that they went through so that we could learn today today and we can learn how to get through life one day the father gave me a dream and I'm not sure if I shared this before. I'm sorry if I did. But it, it, it brings to mind what I'm trying to say to you. It brings that dream to mind. Me and this guy who had played around with my mind and my heart for quite some time were in a classroom. And in that classroom, the teacher said, we were sitting down at our desk and the teacher said tell me what you've learned or raise your hand if you've learned something that you want to share something or other like that and I raised my hand and the teacher said okay stand up Sean and I stood up and this guy stood up beside me he was in the same classroom. And I don't know why he stood up beside me. But I said, I raised my hand and I said, I learned that I don't love him anymore. Thank you, Father. Or it was some may have even been, I learned. No, it was I learned. How not to love him anymore. Hallelujah. Because this guy had my heart for so long. And it was bad. It was to my detriment. And the Most High broke the curse off of me. In order for him to do that, we have to know it's a curse. And we have to pray for deliverance. And then he can set us free. Otherwise... It's not going to be done. You have to ask. You have to want freedom. You have to want something different in your life. And life beat me up some kind of good. And then I wanted to be free. And so I began to ask him. Hallelujah. Thank you all. Be blessed.